Hi, my name is Thomas Yee, and I'm a third year medical student at Brown University in Lifespan. Today, I'll be walking you through our development of an original artificial intelligence system for use in identifying intracranial hemorrhage. Before we begin, I'd like to affirm we have no conflicts of interest and take a moment to acknowledge all of my co-authors and supporters in this project. Our motivation behind the system lies in the context of intracranial hemorrhage, which is often secondary to stroke and trauma. Patients that present to the ED require a rapid turnaround time on imaging results, especially with certain bleed types. So we considered how some technical innovation could augment the process. This led to the development of our open source solution, the DICOM Image Analysis and Archive System, better known as Diana. We can boil down the core functionality of Diana to its real-time artificial intelligence or AI pipelines, which offer a new potential means of delivering AI models to clinical settings. In this case, our goal was intracranial hemorrhage detection from ED head trauma CT scans, made possible by Diana's ability to monitor the hospital's central image archive, or PACS. Diana has other tools as well, including big data retrieval from PACS, in addition to the ability to orchestrate comprehensive dose monitoring across an institution's radiation-based imaging, but our discussion today will be focused on the methodology and evaluation of the AI pipelines. To get an overview of how all the systems work together, we can start by reviewing the traditional workflow. Normally, when a patient is imaged by a CT scanner, those images are then stored in the PACs. From there, a reader looking to access the images must use a machine connected to the PACs and pull them up for view. This is all done under stringent time constraints. For example, code strokes must be read within 15 minutes of arrival at the local institution. So how does Diana assist in this process? Well, Diana is set up on an institutional machine on the same network as the PACs. The user interface for Diana is a command line interface written in the Python programming language that runs on a Docker container housing all the necessary analysis and control scripts. To provide a brief refresher, Containers are a standardized unit of software that allow developers to isolate applications from the host environment, and they're defined in a way that promotes scalability and reproducibility. As part of data retrieval, an Orthanc service is also created, which one can think of as a mini packs. The monitoring configuration is established when a programmatic request is forwarded to Orthanc via the command line interface. Orthanc is capable of communicating with packs, and this request sets Orthanc to query the packs for any new studies on a minute-to-minute -minute basis. From there, any new imaging studies that match our selection criteria of ED head trauma CT scans are retrieved from the PACs back into our thank. If desired, we can strip all PHI tags programmatically. PHI-free data are then saved locally to the machine Diana is running on, where it is automatically processed by the appropriate AI model. For results reporting, Diana forwards the data along the pipeline for display on Slack which is an online communications platform. Shown here is a sample output for what a user might see at the endpoint. In this case, a type of bleed detected and a prediction probability. As previously mentioned, Diana houses other tools and potential communications. One is a clinical report database called Empower, developed by Nuance and formerly known as Montage. So in evaluating the AI pipelines, Diana was set up at Rhode Island Hospital and configured to monitor the PACs for all ED head trauma CT scans over the course of two months. The ground truth was obtained from radiologist reports, which were accessible for each case thanks to the Empower database. The numbers of interest for analysis included the latency for both Diana and radiologists. To compute this, we define the starting point as the time when an image is received in PACs. The endpoint for Diana is the time of posting on a Slack alert channel, and the endpoint for radiologist is the time when the initial report is finalized. A paired t-test was performed to assess for any significant differences. We also assessed the sensitivity and specificity of the ICH model, along with the subtyping performance for the classic bleed types shown here. So let's take a look at what those numbers look like, starting with latency in an emergency setting. As you can see, across 626 cases, Diana clocked in at just over 20 minutes, while radiologists were closer to 90 minutes. As for the AI model itself, we looked at some other performance metrics. The detection threshold was set at 50.7% based on the optimal operating point computed for a previous cohort. In this case, we found that the model had a sensitivity and specificity of 92 and 94% respectively, with an AUC of 97%. For cases that were positive for brain bleed according to radiology report, 
we found that the AI model's ability to predict all subtypes was reasonable, with the lowest success still at 87% for intraparenchymal bleeds. The results suggest that Diana offers a means of AI delivery that could fit into present clinical workflows. In summary, we've developed a system that can provide rapid, automated screening for emergent imaging with the aim of assisting existing workflow and hopefully, as a consequence, clinical outcomes. We're incredibly excited about the kind of potential Diana has in various contexts and are planning on investigating further. These are just a few of the ideas we've considered, including automated stroke screening or chest x-ray evaluation. So with that, I'd like to thank you all for your time and attention. Please feel free to reach out to us if you have any questions or feedback, or maybe even drop us a pull request on GitHub.